do this where I can see it? Huh? You can do this where I can see it?
request a motion accepting the agenda. And I don't know if the new council people received the one. Here you go. This, this is really the same thing. It's just a little more detailed. Yeah. You got one? Yeah. It's just a little bit more detailed than, uh, than what we had. Uh, and it also includes the temporary committee appointments. Uh, but other than that, it's the same as what, what you saw before. I'll make a motion to uh, to accept this agenda. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Call the roll. Mr. Carter.
Bob, you gave me a letter. Bart, you also provided a letter. And Sal and Kent. So I wanted to thank you guys for the support and helping me get that. Um, also, if you guys would like to work with me on reducing the fire risk and air pollution with the burning of the leaves, we can process that. It's, you know, we would love to do that, take those resources, and actually um, make good food for our plants. So um, we just got our compost um, tested, and it's out of this world for nutrients. So we're saving the environment and provide, you know, creating a good product. Um, the, third, the second thing, um, we are hosting a workshop to connect farmers and people closer to their food, educate people. Uh, we'll have a presentation from the kids um, that will present the program that I present in the schools. And then the last thing, um, we are adopting a string. So I'm asking the city for a recommendation on that string. So I'm basically going to clean it up, pull the tires out, and eat trash. Um, we'll also be taking water samples. Um, that's what's been recommended. So, um, but any rec uh, the one thing that I would probably ask mostly from the city would be help in notifying the property owners. So when we're stomping around there, um, you know, we're not... Is that part of the train team initiative? That's exactly it, yeah. yeah. So if anybody would like to join us in our efforts too, um, we welcome that as well. Um, they give us free t-shirts and bags and assistance. Anything we need, they'll give us. Um, just basically looking to clean the town up and put action to our words and inspire other people and, you know, the kids, really. So, Can I say something real yes. quick? Well, there's so many people here tonight. Vanessa's very <coughs> modest about it, but I didn't even realize she did a walkthrough with, with uh, our representative, <coughs> Jim Hansen. And um, the awareness that she's raising in the schools is incredible. My kids come home and the things that they're not being taught and what she's doing, a lot of it volunteer work, um, is exactly what this town needs. So, you know, I, I love the fact that she's cloaked in humility, but at the same time, I want to give her a round of applause as well because she did a lot of work. So, that is it. Now, can I pass these out or leave them for somebody? Yeah, feel, feel free. And uh, Vanessa, I'd like to. My paper if you guys don't need it. But. I'd like to thank you for all of your efforts on the community and uh, perhaps on the stream thing we could just meet, mm -hmm. we could just meet with Bob and, sure. and we could uh, figure out as many logistics need to be accommodated and figure out a way to notify our property owners. Mm -hmm. Keep the core phrase yeah, what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carter? 
Yes. Mrs. Huffy? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Oakley? Yes. Mr. Pollock? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yay. The warrant so approves. Okay. Also made a motion to bring to full council paying Klinger and Associates $8,049.13, as well as Lehman Construction uh, for $287,033.25 for a total of $295,082.38, seconded by Mr. Neener, myself, Mr. Steven, Mr. Wood, voting nay. Um, I'm sorry, all three of those were yays. Mr. Wood was the only one voting nay. Uh, I make a motion to pay that in full as well for the $295,082.38. Second. Made and seconded. Make a roll. Mr. Carter? Yes. Mrs. Huffy? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Oakley? Yes. Mr. Pollock? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Okay. Uh, for those of you that weren't here, we had a discussion on um, police department uh, raises for our police department. Um, I, don't, I don't think you were here yet for finance. Uh, Don, were you here for finance? I didn't catch all what you said. Okay, well, I, I just want to get this paperwork to you guys. Basically, here's what we're looking at. And Tim, were you here at all? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the paperwork is basically talking about the uh, nutrition we've been having. Okay, you guys have heard us talk about it. Uh, uh, Chief Hughes got us the information. So we're looking at raises. I, I printed up some preliminary stuff for you guys to look at. We're good. We talked about set, uh, scheduling a work study, which I'd like to do now, but I want to get this to you guys to look at for the next three weeks. We'll get to the work study, talk about it in committees, hopefully have something by next council meeting to, to pass. Um, can that be done now or do I have to wait for a new budget? Well, we can, I think we can do it now. That's something we'll talk about in the work study. Um, is Chief Hughes available if we're going to schedule this? He'd have to step out just for a second, but okay. go ahead and proceed and I'll certainly will let him know what the results are. Is there a time, uh, is there a time this month that somebody is just unequivocally not available for this work study? Yeah, we're study. talking about finance committee and, and police. police committee, so if you look in, on those two committees, you'll see if you're on there. Sonny, what's good for you? Well, <clears throat> Wednesday works really well for I, me. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm not stuck on Wednesday, but that works well for me. On Wednesdays is the one day I can get home and actually be here all day, so that would work out good for me as well. Um, about anybody else have any issues with the Wednesday? Okay. Um, sorry, bear with me, guys. Twenty third or thirtieth puts us prior to committee meeting. Let's 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 shoot for the thirtieth. Will that work for everybody? Thirtieth, I'll be at the um, Municipal City Managers Association meeting. I'll be gone the twenty third. I get back. In I mean, you can have your Yeah, I know, but I'd really like you here. Um, did you take the final vote in disguise? Let's just do it to beach and plus. I like the way you think, though. I like, I like your head, though. Um, City won't pay for it. <laughs> Sharing the buzz kill again. Well, let's just, I, I think we're going to have to do 30th, and then I'll just, I'll, I'll email. When are you back in town? I'll be leaving the 29th. Why don't I do this? Why don't I get... I'll get with you before that and get some of your ideas, bring it to the meeting, and then we'll talk afterwards and see if there's anything major that we need to change. Well, by then I, I should have the mayor appraised on the budget staff. Okay. All right. All right. So let's. Uh, I make a motion to plan a work study on the 30th of April, which is a Wednesday. Um, does 5:30 work? Or everybody, 5:30. Five, five o'clock. Five, five, five is better for me. Okay. Let's make a motion for five o'clock for work study on the police department. We're also going to talk for the police department raises, and we're also going to be speaking about um, budgeting in a new police vehicle as well. I have a jury trial set that day, but it's really fiscal and not really a legal okay. matter. So. Okay. Well, and like I said, I'll shoot emails up there, buddy. If there's a, if there's anything that we need to tweak or change, just get back to me. We'll have it ready by committee. That's kind of what I want to do. Is have Rachel thought it was a good idea, but Bart. We'll have it ready by committee, and then we we'll talk about more there. Yeah. So, okay, I make a motion for April 30th, 5 o'clock. Before you, before you make a motion in a second, I'd like to add a little bit of input here. Sure. This is right at our budget time. Uh -huh. There's other employees within the city. Mm -hmm. 
and you're only including two uh, committees for this work study that will involve all council members. I'm suggesting, even though we need to focus on the police and the turnover, right at the time of budget, which is now, right. we're going to implement this, we also need to look at this as a citywide effort. Sure. Not only just pinpoint the police department, which is much needed, but also we need to look at what if anything, or you'll be able to do with other employees. It's been factored in already, you know, the parades and that area. Well, it, it, I, I see what you're saying. The For me, the immediacy of, of the PD and the attrition we've had, because we've lost five of eight in under four years. So that three months ago is what kind of sparked my interest to really get involved and get this done. I agree with you 100%, though. I think we need to look across the board. Um, yeah, I think the budget work study, we can add that in, but I think this is something that's going to need more tweaking because of the um, the, um, the, the, the higher level of the salary. And, and Tim, I don't, I don't know if it helps. Um, I do anticipate significant <coughs> conversation in preparation of the budget yeah. and developing a, a really clear fiscal policy that addresses a number of issues, including the personnel ones you bring up. So this is just one piece to take a little time and look at these numbers and come back with what would be a good suggestion, not a decision, that then we can look at together again. I would also say that just because uh, this work study on those two floor space is a very informal thing, uh, it's a conversation, I, I would think that if, if any of the other council members want to sure. attend, yeah. yeah. all council, I just find we're it. just trying to yeah. I'm making another uh, work study for the whole council. Well, and, and it, it could be a, a, a committee of the whole that would meet. Um, I just didn't want to impact everyone on every issue. So maybe if, if you're interested, I would just simply invite you to participate. And I think I think eventually everybody's going to be voting on that, so be, feel welcome to come because it, it's, it's information. And like you said about going across the board, along with the police department, that's why I requested, you know, I wanted to look at neighboring towns and median information and that kind of thing. I think we definitely need to dig a little more across the board. I can only say that I did the work on the police department, so it wouldn't be fair for me to say, do you have any input yet, you know, on the on the other salaries? Because I don't I don't know what the competition is. So but let's 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 attack it though. Absolutely. So yeah, we'll uh, so five o'clock are, are we good? Five o'clock Wednesday the thirtieth. Make a motion for five o'clock the thirtieth for work study. Second. All those in favor, roll call. <laughs> Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Oakley? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Hey. Hey, very good. I appreciate you guys spending the extra time to look at that issue. Uh, the last part of it made a motion to adjourn, seconded by Bart. All voting yay. Meeting adjourned was at 543. Thank you very much. Very clever note. <laughs> uh, I need to resign my uh, council seat. Uh, so what's involved in that? Uh, you just announced that you're re resigning that. I resign my uh, council seat in lieu of the election, and I'd like uh, for the council to declare that seat vacant. Uh, and I'm not prepared to nominate the new member. No, of the when you get, we will get to that and we'll discuss it a little further down. Um, so do we need a motion? And well, the council will declare that seat vacant. And I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept Bart's resignation as Ward 3 representative and declare his seat vacant. I'll second. Uh, roll call. Roll call, Sheriff. Sure. <laughs> 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 second. John Carter. <laughs> Mr. Carter? Yeah. Mrs. Helke? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Oakley? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Motion passes, so thank you for removing that burden for me. <laughs> uh, and thank you, uh, Robert, for catching yeah. that. Uh, okay, so I, I believe we've concluded finance now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, fire. Um, I know uh, Mr. Oakley would be next on, on the list. Uh, if you want to read the minutes, you can, I guess. Mr. Elliott made a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Mr. Wood seconded the motion. All
disconnects. I think this is this is for a thermal expansion tank uh, to deal with some pressure anomalies that they have uh, run into there. Um, the water uh, water committee did not recommend these be approved. Uh, they recommend they recommended forwarding it for discussion by the full council. Uh, there was a question about uh, whether or not this work was already done prior to. Particular circumstance is the seven hundred and ninety five one dollar or seven hundred and ninety five dollar project required on a propane tank was absolutely necessary because when we had an emergency situation the generator didn't kick on. So that had to be done. Um, the other one was also done, it was a matter of a, a safety issue and that both of these they're going to get paid one way or another. Either you pay them out of the bond funds, or since the work has already been completed, we pay them out of the city budget. We have <coughs> contingency funds within the bond, and it would be my recommendation that we go ahead and pay them from within those contingency funds. Are there remaining concerns or discussion on the, the council? Anybody like to have a motion to accept these? Bob, you, you said this isn't a situation where they could have uh, gotten with us. They no. Needed, they needed them yesterday? Yeah. Basically. Basically, otherwise, it leaves your propane generator disabled. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm not a... And the ultraviolet is all part of the... I'm going to trust the people. The ultraviolet is all part of the disinfection process. So if you don't have that in place you run the risk of putting um, an affluent back into the river that could possibly not meet MDNR standards. So both of these things are necessities, basically. I'll make a motion. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Can I ask a question? Before before I do that? Absolutely. <coughs> I think that was part of the problem. And there, was, there, were, there were three that uh, Monroe brought up. One was that they were done prior to getting approval. A second one was that uh, Monroe had some questions about whether or not indeed this is an explosive uh, area. It, it needs to whether or not it needs to be explosive approved. In this case, it was different from the other where he had thought that they needed explosive proof switches. And in that was outside in the air where this particular switch is located is in an enclosed and confined space and is absolutely necessary. And, and what did the architectural friends call for? Well, let's, let, let's, let me get to that. The third thing that he brought up was he felt that the $795 for change order 12 was too high and that he had some private information that it should have been closer to $500 and he was questioning the price, that $200 difference. Um, I don't know, why, I haven't looked at the plan so I can't speak to what was called for. These are changes so they were not in the original plan. They're something they found on the site and are adapting to. But what I would comment to is that we have hired a professional engineer right. for the purpose of making these kinds of assessments in the field and bringing them to us. We are not professional engineers. So if we have a serious concern that our professional engineer is somehow failing us in his professional duty, then that's, that's one thing. But as far as I can see, if the professional engineer that we've hired to tell us what we need to do is coming to us and saying <laughs> we need to do this, our city administrator is saying we need to do this, and the choice really is are we going to pay for it out of pocket or pay for it out of the bond money? There's contingency. Out of the contingency fund, that it, it seems like this is something that we should just go ahead and move forward with, especially for $3,800. I think we should uh, recognize Mr. Mr. Elliott for his thought and his awareness that we have no alternative. So, uh, if I, I don't know what your motion was. Well, I'm going to wait. 
Jim sounds like he needs it. Um, as far as as far as the bid specs, was this these items not included in the specs? Correct. So originally not included, that, and there was something the that they weren't the, aware of. So that's the reason for the change order. Yes, and so usually the, the only thing out of the ordinary is this part of this work was done prior to our authorization. Correct. Is Mayor <coughs> waiving their fee for the change order then, that they collect for doing the change order? That I couldn't tell you. That because if this is an oversight on their part, they normally put in a, a fee to make change orders. Um, I just would like to exclude their fee if they had such a fee for conducting a change order. That's a good idea. Well, I don't see it indicated. It, I mean, is it in the contract that we had with Planner Association with bid uh, change orders? Yeah, it says change in contract price, change in contract times. Um, when you say there is no fee for yeah, them. When you say fees for them to create the change order, I mean, are you thinking clerical? Well, they, they, yes, yeah, typically, engineering fees. Typically, engineering fees to submit this change order to the city council, they'll charge us for it. Usually, no, a change, usually a change order is brought forth from the city. Not typically from the contractor or from them. So well, that, and that's the reason we have them because right. the city right. does not have the expertise. Right. right. So I don't see where it was factored in to the. So there's no there's no itemization that we could even see on there that. No. And I've not seen any fees built in on any of their change orders. These were all part of the contingency funds. They are the ones that came up with that total amount contingency funds to begin with. We need to, con I think we need to consider the fact that we're paying them for their expertise, that this is an oversight. But with contracting, I mean, when you have engineers, I understand what you're saying. At the same time, I grew up in construction. Things happen on job sites, especially something to this magnitude. When we have $5 million bonds and things like that happen, we needed fencing, we needed rock, there's things that happen. So I, I'm not necessarily upset at, at that because that happens. But if I, I am curious to know, yeah, that's something I never thought of. Um, if they are billing for that um, based paying. on their oversight, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll pay the work, we'll pay but I don't want to pay for them to prepare it yeah. based on their. So, it's just, so I, I think that's something to find out, maybe, maybe even just a phone call. Um, I don't know how that'll set us back if we. I, th I pull think back you could probably formulate your motion such that. We yeah. would approve these yeah. costs, not these sure. amounts, yeah. sure. but the full the full amount minus, minus any right. fee to claim it. Yeah. That, that way we could proceed administratively yeah. to get things paid and moving. Yeah. But if they need to charge for those fees, that need to come back to us. To, to Separately. Yeah. Yeah. Separately. Uh, and, so I'll, and I'll do that. I'll make a motion to pay this in full minus any fees associated with creating the change order from claim it. Second. Made the second discussion. Discussion. Okay, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> um, I want to maybe qualify my vote. I'm all for the plant being as operation as efficiently and as safely as possible. None of these things are outside the scope of what we should do. Maybe they should have caught it in the original bin. Maybe not, but these things need to be done. <coughs> By voting for this, I want to qualify that, that that does not give them carte blanche to constantly do the change orders before they bring them to the council. Okay, so Mark and I had that discussion. Maybe we could reiterate that from the council. Oh. Let's get to No, I have to. I have to get council approval. These are recommendations that are presented to me to submit to you all for approval. Ideally, ideally, before they do the work, the change order request would come to us for approval, mm -hmm. and we have requested that. But in some cases, that's not an efficient or practical way to wait for the next council meeting for that to happen. 
And these, these are two of such yeah, cases. But my question is, these is change it, orders have to be approved by the Missouri Department of Natural Resources also. But what I'm asking is, are they doing the change orders before they mentioned it to Mr. Kinney? No, in or this case, in this case, it was in this case it was a necessity well, because I'm otherwise it wasn't going to operate. But I can imagine in the event of emergency. I mean, they did mention you, for they in fact did it, and then said that this is what we did, or this is what we're going to do. Yeah, and like I say, I've had this discussion with Mark. We talked about it last week, and I said, in the future, I don't see any more change orders coming along, because there isn't but maybe $3,000 left in contingency funds. So we'll reiterate that we'd like to see the change orders prior to the work being done. Perhaps the motion has been made, seconded, and uh, your, your note to that effect, Sonny, will be, be caught in minutes and communicated. So please call all. Mr. Carter? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Helke? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Oakley? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Pollard? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Yeah. Okay, those are approved. <coughs> Anything else from water? I saw Chief Hughes back there. Are you just that night, uh, Chief. Do you know if you can make a uh, um, Wednesday? Yes. Do you know if you can make a uh, on the thirtieth, the five p.m. meeting? To yes, sir. It's been passed on to me. Okay. I apologize that I wasn't present. And you're available for that. Yes, I will be. Available. Okay. Super. Thank you. Um, ordinance. The ordinance yeah. committee met, and there were no ordinance brought before them. Reports of special committees, city administrator. Um, there's been a lot of talk generated about um, the fill that was deposited up off of um, up off of Oak Drive, and that um, I can assure you that it has been looked at by DNR. DNR has all has approved it. They said it is clean fill, it is uncontaminated soil, rock, sand, gravel. Um, there was a study done, in fact, Klinger and Associates did the asbestos study. As this stuff was the stuff that was removed from the old Kroger store. There is no asbestos in it. It's clean fill. I know it's unsightly for some, some of the local residents, but I think given in time, the proper property owner will take care of it. And but um, there is nothing hazardous about it whatsoever. That's all I have. Okay, thanks, Bob. Uh, do we have anyone from the <coughs> Relations Commission? Okay, Board of Adjustments. Uh, we will deal with them next month or so. Development. We have a report. I don't think TC is here, though. Thanks for your name. Nate. But a uh, significant report, uh, including some recommendations for the new council and mayor. Um, we just got this this evening, so I don't know if you have time to read it or, or think about it, but it produces a good uh, jumping off spot for. Uh, us to think about our city priorities, which I want to get to in new business. So um, does anyone have any questions or discussion about economic development, the economic development, Mayor's Office of Economic Development? Otherwise, we'll move on. Okay. Oh. I understood this afternoon that Mr. Powers resigned. I just had heard that, and I haven't read the letter yet. Did that say that it's not the letter that you just read? No, yeah. this is not that letter. 
we have apparently received his resignation effective 21st. The 21st. Um, so, I, and I just found out tonight, so I haven't even seen the, the letter. Will the council accept his resignation or is that your authority? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure what, how that exactly works. Uh, how do you stop it? Yeah. 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 The 13th Amendment prohibits involuntary service. <laughs> we can't stop it. We, can't stop it. we frown on that, well, yeah. but we can. I, I think. I think probably the mayor or and or the council could reply in whichever, in whatever way they deem appropriate to a resignation. Um, I, obviously, we can't say yes or no. It's, it's the man's decision to to work or not. Uh, but what the first thing that occurred to me was that I would like to have a discussion with him about why or if there's a problem. I'd like to know if there's a circumstance where we can be familiar. I haven't had a chance to address it, so I was going to bring it up under tonight's <coughs> business. But we did receive the letter. Yeah. It is possible if they indict somebody and change their mind. Several, several of us have been enticed to serve a little more. The council authorized the hiring, and the administration hired. So it is an employee who is hired. In this case, it's the mayor's office of economic development. Yes, it's not really an appointment, it's a, it's a hiring. Um, but I would like to, for us, to have a very robust discussion about the role of economic development in Louisiana. Uh, I'd like to see significant change of emphasis there. Uh, so, so this is maybe a little bit in play. Tim? Just one uh, statement, Mayor. Uh, this is a vital component for the city and for our future. And I know the position was filled part-time. And if there's any other means with other strains on our budget, if there's a way and means to make this position, regardless who it is, a full-time position, and that may be a consideration. It's important. It's extremely important. In fact, in the, the motion to <coughs> have the administration hire him but to the yeah. format I made, uh, and um, the actual motion was for a full-time professional economic development person. So I, I had envisioned back then you have my full support and that this is a critical, maybe one of the most critical positions for Louisiana in the coming years. Okay, uh, very good. Introductions and resolutions. We yes, have, oh, <coughs> Yeah, Bob. I have uh, one. You've got it, Tim? Yeah. No, I got it. Oh, go ahead. I'll, I'll okay. wait my turn. Okay. Uh, this is a, a resolution authorizing the filing of an application with the Missouri Department of Natural Resources, state revolving fund program for loans under the Missouri Clean Water Law, section 644 RS No. Whereas under the terms of the Missouri Clean Water Law, section 644 revised statutes of Missouri, the state of Missouri is authorized the making of loans and or grants to authorize applicants to aid in the construction of specific public projects. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of Louisiana, Missouri, that Bart Meadner be hereby authorized to execute, file an application on behalf of the City of Louisiana, Missouri, with the state of Missouri for a loan and or grant to aid in the construction of the Louisiana Wastewater Treatment Plant Upgrade Project. So basically that is what you would be authorized. I'll make a motion we accept this resolution. I second it. Motion made and seconded. Please call the roll. Mr. Carter? Yeah. Mrs. Hilton? Yeah. Mr. Hoffman? Yes. Mr. Oakley? Here. Mr. Foley? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yeah. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, new business. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Tim. Mayor. Uh, this may not be the exact uh, point. I didn't know where to interject this at. So please uh, accept my apologies if this is not the right uh, part of the agenda. What I have um, for me is something I've drafted 
and I would like to put it in either a resolution form and seek this council's uh, full approval. This is a reaffirmation of city policy, so we have it already. So it's this council, I'm seeking you to reaffirm this. Uh, one of the most valuable assets the city can have is its employees. When we look back at the decision we, decisions we make here, a vast percentage directly affect them. When these people are on the job in payroll, they're subject to certain rules that govern both how they perform their jobs and how those that pay them, the citizens, perceive them in that role. Because whether they are in a city vehicle, city building, or out on the street, they represent the city. As such, the citizens' perception of the city is somewhat based on the manner in which their employees present themselves. And I think that those who work for the city understand this. This country was founded on certain basic freedoms spelled out in the Bill of Rights. Every declared war or police action entered into, I believe, has been to preserve freedom and democracy. I know several who answered their country's call to serve and did so with distinction. One of these basic freedoms that, they sh that should be enjoyed by all is the freedom of speech. To be able to express their opinions and views in a public meeting or forum without fear of retribution or censorship in the workplace from those in a position of authority, whether appointed or elected, as long as these individuals are voicing their opinion, not those of others, unless empowered to do so by them. That type of involvement should not only be allowed, but encouraged. Because who better than those employed by the city should have a finger on the pulse of the city? Their input should be considered a vital component in any decision or policy making body of this city. In the recent past, I've become aware of hinted and veiled threats voiced that this apparently isn't everyone's opinion. I want, to, I want it perfectly understood that should it come to light that this occurs in any manner, that those responsible, whether appointed or elected, will be subject to disciplinary measures up to and including dismissal or removal from office. Our Constitution decrees that this is to be, and no one, no matter how important they might think they are, will deny anyone employed by the city this right. At this time, I'm instructing or requesting the city clerk to draft a letter to this effect to all department heads and persons of authority, included but not limited to members of the city council, mayor, city attorney, and city administrator. And if, if appropriate, have the city attorney draft an ordinance to that effect. I would also appreciate the full council support in this effort to preserve and protect what many have fought, as well as made the supreme sacrifice to preserve. And I so move. motion is to specifically logistically to have the city clerk send out a reaffirmation letter to this policy to department heads. Yes, Mayor. I do have I do have a draft. Okay. Um, I feel incredibly in line with what you just read. Uh, saw it in the last election. Yeah, I don't look at this as a as a legislative piece. 
I, I look at it as an affirmation. It's a policy. And, and what I'm liking for the council, take this and pass it on. To, to pass on your letter? And that's it. Well, I, I don't even think you need council to vote on that. I would be glad to make sure that every department head gets a copy of that letter. But I, I would I would be glad to work with you in any capacity on that issue. But if they do pass the resolution, that makes it, it's a clear message that that's now for legislative. So we need some language. You'd like to see some language drafted for a resolution. If it is resolved, I mean, uh, if the council votes on it now, all it is is on that, to that I'm stipulation. Like, I'm like, this is, I'm this is a, and this really isn't in the form of a resolution. Yeah, but so why don't I take this, put this in, get this in the form of a resolution, bring it back to council, yeah. make sure everybody has it in advance, and then the, the council can vote on uh, on that resolution. But I will also pass this letter directly on to our department heads. Can I ask what's preempting this? There is no, there is no focus. I've been in city government for 20 years <coughs> prior to here. Uh -huh. And this is just a reaffirmation, nothing distinctly pinpointed towards past or present, whether elected or administrative. <coughs> if we're gonna move this city forward in a positive way, we have to empower the city employees, the ability to stand at that podium right there sure. and give an opinion without fear of retribution. I don't have to point back to an example to know that perception exists. And I want the city employees to know that this council works for them. Works for them. Okay. We work for the citizens. So that's what I'm seeking. I want the city employees to see a clear message from this council. Okay. Let me uh, also get the council a summary of what's in the employee handbook regarding political activity. And, and there is a separation, for instance, come to work and campaign, right? But you can put a yard sign up. Right. You know, but there's this very distinct kind of line that's clearly eliminated. So let me get you that so that we all have that in mind and then we'll draft a resolution affirming that, that not position. Get them a copy of the just, anything that causes transparency, I am for. Sideway, uh, as I take this seat tonight, um, I want to communicate to this council that, that one of the top things for me is to empower you. I believe that the way that our government, our local government has conceptualized itself has been um, misconstrued and weighted heavily towards the authority of the mayor. I believe that the city council is the is where policy should be discussed and generated. You're right, it's legislative, but it's more than legislative. It's 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 not just what we actually codify. It's the policy. It's the policies. It's the attitude. It, you guys decide who we are as city government. Our job and the administration is to to make that happen out in the field. So I want to know from you what need from me to make better policy and I want to know I, I want help understanding what you mean by that policy so that I can take it and implement it in, in our administration in the best way possible I want this very much to be a, be a team but but my goal is to empower you guys and through you guys this every citizen here in, in, this, in the city to have some authority and control in what we talk about how we talk about it, what our priorities are. Um, I want it to be very open and inclusive. Uh, and I want to have sp space for discussions that, that need to happen uh, that are respectful, critical. We're going to disagree, uh, but, but I really think that those conversations can vet the quality of our results. And so I, I just want to pledge to you that I'm I'm open and available and approachable, uh, and I want it to happen in 
the open at these meetings and any anytime we need to talk. Um, but I'm very anxious to help you. So, so my question is, how can I help you with what you guys are doing and those chairs? Uh, what can this administration do? My role also is to help pull that together and, and get us all on the same page. Uh, so, so I will try to do that. Uh, but I want it to be your priorities. Obviously, I have thoughts and notions that I'll contribute. Uh, but in the end, you guys are the ones who figure out the priorities, right? And I'm the one who implements, I'm the one who helps implement those, right? You, you'll do a lot more of it than I am, I'm sure. So I wanted to start our discussion, and, and this is just the beginning. I don't, I don't see that we are ever going to be out in the clear on this. What are our city's priorities? Because as I've watched city government for the last four or more years, up close and personal, certainly in the last year, I can't tell you what our local government's priorities are or what our plan is. And I'm, I sat in that seat and I don't know what our plan is. We need a plan and that has to be driven by priorities. So right now, tonight, very informal way, I will suggest to you that we need to come up with three to five serious priorities that we really think Louisiana needs to address, that we need to develop our conversation, the way we structure our agendas, the way we structure our committees, the way we approach shortfalls or, or uh, surpluses in a budget or how we're spending our money, our fiscal policy, all of that needs to be driven by what those priorities are. And I, I want that to come from you guys. So I would suggest that, that economic development, infrastructure planning are two really big ones that, that came up out of this elect, election cycle and election cycles previous. So I would throw those out as two that are important to me. But again, I don't want this to be my set of priorities. Um, but if I had to, off the cuff, say, well, what are two priorities? Then what are my big priorities? Those would be mine. And I would be very interested just to round table, if we can start with Lori, what are the things that are on your mind just off the cuff that are your priorities for you in Indiana? Uh, and maybe we'll go ahead and do that, just a discussion. Lori? Um, well, I think that those two things are hugely important. I do think that when I went around and I was knocking doors and I was talking to people in the community, and when I said to them, what do you, where do you feel our priorities should be? Almost without fail, it was infrastructure, it was sewers, it was streets, it was those things that really are the foundation for everything else. Because if we don't have sound infrastructure, if we don't have the utilities in place, then we have a more difficult with economic development and attracting, you know, industry into our city. So if I were going to prioritize those two things, that they could really interchange um, for number one and number two. But number three, I think that door knocking and talking to our citizens needs to be uh, done more so than just at election time. Um, people are busy. They're working. They're raising very easy for someone in, in a governmental position to sit and say people don't care and people aren't interested. I didn't find that to be the case that people weren't interested when I talked to them. And I think it would be very lovely if all eight of us, soon to be eight of us at some point, and Barb would resolve that once a month we would pick X number of houses and resolve that we will all go and do door, door knocking each month and talk to the people in this community. If we want them to be involved and on board with us, I think that we need to become more involved with them. Great, awesome. Chuck, what do you do? I don't know that I could add anything. Um, I think most of our constituents do not understand that we're legislating. Uh, they think we can, you know, cause the moon to turn purple, uh, and, and we can't do that. We'd have to do it within ordinances and so on. Uh, I'd like to see a 
little more loose on the mic. Um, I, I heard the exact same thing you did. Uh, I also heard that uh, people have not always been treated equally. Uh, some people, because of who they are, uh, have uh, the ear of say to this in my campaign um, at the forum and stuff, and we as a city government have to lead by example. We're entrusted with the citizens' tax monies. <coughs> Everything that the other councilman, council lady, has stated is 100% accurate. I'm right on board with that. We almost cannot take a good, honest, firm step forward until that we have public perception out there that we are communicating, that we're working together, we're moving forward, and spending the taxpayers' money appropriately and efficiently. So purchasing policies, bid procedures, all of these things are critical for me. Uh, without doing that, showing that we are rolling up our sleeves, not just here at the council, but also each city employee, that we are doing the best that we can do for the city. Our customers, if you're a city employee, infrastructure, economic development, key. Uh, I don't think we really can pursue much in those avenues without 
taking care of ourselves as a government and that public perception. Better government, our integrity, and kind of a proactive communication uh, right. system. So transparency, consistency, how we enforce the codes, how we, you know, how we treat the citizens is paramount. Uh, Mrs. Thomas, perfect example, coming up, volunteerism. You know, putting forth an effort. I know the Elks uh, pursued uh, uh, a program a, a couple years ago, I, I'm not sure, about the town branch cleanup, you know, initiatives. Uh, this is a project the council's been working on for a little while. Really, it's a simple solution. We have to get over ourselves and work together and get these projects taken care of. And I think we can. saw it as something that was completed. It's not what, exactly what we wanted. The park isn't exactly where we want to get, <coughs> but they're seeing something completed. So where we've kind of missed, I think, in the past is, is showing small victories month, month to month. You and know, that was it, a victory that was not just city government. That was, it was for everybody. That was the school. It was citizens right. going in and volunteering. But we, we because we did a collective effort with the YMCA, with the school, with ourselves, because yeah. we weren't saying, hey, we're everything. We know how to do mm -hmm. everything. It was collective. You know, to, to just Those are the things that fuel wanting to do it again. Uh, it, it, it's yeah. seeing it completed like that, seeing people excited, it got me excited. Yeah. So to piggyback on that, from my point, if you don't mind, I don't know what order you were going in. Um, you know, here's reality. We need more money. Uh, money follows vision. Okay. Um, I think I, I love the fact that you're doing this. You're putting three to five action plans because when anybody creates a business model or a budget or an idea of something, even outside of municipal government when you're creating a plan for anybody who's owned a business, you have to create a business plan that has action plans, okay? <coughs> Realistic action plans. Now, it's gonna be great to say, hey, let's go build an amusement park down by the riverfront and it'll generate all this money. Well, yeah, that would be phenomenal, but that's not reality. So, to do that, to accomplish that, you have to have short-term goals, three months, six months, one year, long-term goals, two years, five years, and extremely long-term goals, you know, uh, CIB districts and, and DREAM and all these other things that would come to pass. It, our job is to organize all of those visions because when you have, everybody at this table would have three to five phenomenal ideas. I've already heard things that I've seen are saying, well, yeah, that's great. Implementing it is going to take efficiencies and for people to get together, and I think that's where they'll succeed as well collectively. But reality, we need money. And money will follow a vision. People like my, people that are my age, as most of you know, we, I, I've already explained that I'll be moving, unfortunately, I'm hopefully moving back when I retire, and I hope this place is a metropolis. <laughs> but when you come to a place like this, whether you like it or not, whether we can say, well, they really should be looking at the school, you should really be, as parents that are doing this right now, the first thing that attracts us is the aesthetic of where we're at. Now, it takes money for that, but the aesthetic of this community for those of you who've grown up here, probably, uh, you know, Louisiana this, Louisiana that. For people like me that have moved here and chosen to move here, it is breathtaking when you pull into Pike County. And then you get involved and you come downtown and you see, we know there's buildings that have issues and all that. We know that. 
But again, money will follow vision. I promise you that. I understand I'm only 35 years old, but for those <coughs> four years, I've dealt with billionaires, millionaires, and, and people that don't have money. All the same, people are looking for vision. They're looking to, to be a part of something, a, a community. Like he said, and I like what he said, they want their input to matter. And, and I like the fact that you're opening it this way, so kudos to you. I don't have three or three to five. I just, my point, money follows vision. This is the beginning. I agree. I wish I was. Damn. Okay. Um, I agree. Um, economic development and infrastructure, which is kind of my past, um, I have a big passion in mind, huge passion. But I think one of the first things that we, in my opinion, that we need is we need a comprehensive plan. You know, we can sit and talk about all the things that need to be done, which is true. But we need that plan and we need to implement because Louisiana's got how many children? And they make them, and they print them, and that's all they ever do with them. So, and one other thing that I wrote down um, quickly was the flooding on the South Bay. Yeah. To me, you know, there's businesses down there, there's people that live down there, and mm -hmm. I don't think it's right that we just, every year, what, oh, you know, it's spring, it's going to flood down there. I mean, we need to really look at what to do. That's been a huge thing of mine for a long time, too. Well, you know what, Mayor Smiley has really, you know, they're really trying to figure something out for Clarksville. Yeah. And I really wish that we could team up with Mayor Smiley in Clarksville and try to figure out, you know, try to figure out something that we can do. Yeah. You know, we can't just say, oh, it can't be done. Really? And get out of the way of people who are doing it. Yeah. So that's kind of my yeah. Mayor Smiley, especially on that issue, is doing something else that's She's acting not just regionally, but nationally. We've got to call outside of ourselves and engage with, with the larger context of the community. Well, it's like Mr. Beck said the other night. We need to start thinking regionally, not just locally, yeah. but regionally, and that's the only way we're going to grow. Sonny, I, I understand you've knocked on a lot of doors lately. What did you find out? <laughs> <laughs> well, some things I won't tell you. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, we need to change our ordinances to accommodate that if having one council person from each ward doesn't make logistic sense, if we want to make some ad hoc committees, if we want to, however we we'll want to address that. But what I'd really like is to find a couple of hours in the next two months. So we've already scheduled one work study. Maybe we get that one done and we'll look at the following month. But let's go ahead and get it on the books. Let's schedule a time so we all come prepared to spend a good solid two hours really talking about what these priorities ought to be and how we're going to logistically reflect those in our committee structure. Uh, what do we need to look like as a body in order to make sure that we're talking about economic development and jobs and infrastructure and all of these thing, wonderful things that we just mentioned. If that has buy-in, I, uh, I would like to have a motion to uh, schedule it. Mayor, yes. um, before we make a motion on that, sure. um, when is the budget due? When do we have to? You'll need to approve the budget in the May meeting. Uh, Mayor, not to discredit what you're suggesting. No, you're right. I mean, I really certainly look at the budget and passage of that bu budget uh, as a priority immediately <coughs> to review and, and go over. I, com I completely agree. And probably, uh, not probably, the budget is a reflection of fiscal policy. And that fiscal policy should flow from these priorities and conversations we're talking about having. So. Here's the thing, we're all very busy. And if you want something done, give it to a busy person. They'll, they'll get it done, right? Um, we're busy, we're looking at some work studies. Um, I'm willing to do this work if you guys are. Can we get a third work study in these next two months? Wednesday work, Wednesdays work really great for me. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of throwing that as a day of the week uh, out there. E even if I can't, I'm just super busy traveling, but if I can't make it, I'll do it in the conference calls. And some technology in yeah. some of these, but Mayor, I would, I would suggest a council on the whole. Yes, I think on both uh, of these, the council budget the whole and both, and we can discuss a multitude of items uh, within that within that council on the whole. So what two Wednesdays? We've already chewed up the thirtieth. Right? Thirtieth, seventh, and fourteenth. I mean, it's not. It would be great if we could pass that budget on the meeting on the fourteenth or the twelfth in May. But it never happens. We always end up having a special meeting to pass the budget. So, because it's just too hard with the election to get the work study in and go into the budget and implement it. Bob, do we have a rough draft of the budget ready to present to council? close. I want to look at it before it comes to council. And I've got some thoughts on that. So, I need a little bit of time on it. But on the work study, we have scheduled already. We'll maybe make change yeah. or right. alteration in the budget number. Absolutely. Uh, so that's that's the thirtieth. If we wanted to, uh, you know, I mean, if we want to do three Wednesdays in a row, the thirtieth, the seventh. Well, here's, well, here's a question. Well, here's a question on that. Are, are we capable of having two meetings on that Wednesday, the thirtieth? I know it'd be a long session, but it would be benefit to me. To be I there. want to accommodate. Change the budget with your, with your work. All, all, and all I can say is, on the other two, whatever works, if I can get there, I'll be there. If not, you guys go after it, and I'll, I'll try to be there on the conference call. Let's tr let's just try to hit it hard on the seventh, and then maybe we'll we will have enough to to act on the fourteenth. And if we don't, then we'll push it a month and do it right. So, if, is my understanding on the thirtieth, we can have a little bit more discussion than well. Um, uh, I, we, we can, but like I said, I think what Bart was saying was he wants to he wants to uh, give it to give each issue its due time, and I don't think we can do that. In, in one but on the on the seventh, we could have a priorities committee budget conversation and spend a solid couple hours actually working on that, having these conversations, try to come to some recommended decisions. Uh, and if that's not enough time, then we'll we'll take more time. So as soon as you get a chance, Mayor, you'll be pushing out a rough draft yes. of the budget. Yes. Okay. 
So uh, the suggestion would be then our, our next our next one will be that on the 14th, right prior to the. We have to call and work to maybe even fudge a little bit into the council meeting. Start little that bit. one a little early so we have a little extra time. Yeah, close to the low would it be? I'm sorry. Well, well on the 12th. Yeah, I'm sorry. On the 12th, I'm sorry. Right, I'd be open to that. That would be good. So yeah. Um, I like I like that. Do we, do we start it at five? Do we want to tack on an extra half hour? Sure. Give ourselves an hour to have a lot of and a half hour. Okay. I'm a quick talker. So they they're just going to prepare for next week because that captain said it's very funny for the first time. So that would benefit me greatly to do it on that day. Will you put that in the form of a motion and then we'll address it on our <coughs>
that list for that appointment, I'd be happy happy with it. If council wants my number three pick, I'll be happy to put the number three pick in. I'd like this to be a collaborative effort where we wind up with a person that, as a group, we feel is going to be the best solution for the <coughs> and I'm inviting your input uh, into that. So let me know in the next week, week and a half. In the next couple of days, I'll get you a list so that you can kind of run through it in your mind. Okay? And then we'll get our appointments taken care of. Any discussion or thoughts on, on that? Does it work for you? If we have a question or a problem or a concern, when is a good time? Can we come talk to you at the office in person this year now? Yeah. Are you just going to be on the team? Yeah, and I'm through ICQ on the internet, Don. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'll see you next meeting. I don't know what I should do. I haven't, I haven't established uh, hours. I'm still looking at that. Uh, but I am thinking that I will have two half days that I will absolutely be there to schedule. And so anybody knows they can get me. But I will be there more than that. Uh, and those will my days that I can focus on city stuff for Monday as needed or by appointment, definitely. But Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So you'll you'll have some time. I don't know exactly what those hours will be, but give me a call uh, on the phone, and and I will uh, I will set something up if you want to talk. Certain hours? Mm -hmm. you, have you designated any hours? I, I haven't yet, but if you want to talk, let me know. You and I will find a, a time to talk. But I will establish some some regular office hours where I will be in this building. Um, we've already talked about the annual budgeting process. I just wanted to emphasize again that this is not just logistics and paying bills. This the budget is a tool. It's a reflection and communication device of our fiscal policy. It, it, it says a lot about what we're trying to do. It helps us make sure that we do what we want to do and don't get sidetracked. This is an important tool, and I don't want to treat it as just you know the manner in which we spend money. It, it's a tool leverage towards these priorities that we're establishing. So I'm anxious to, to work on that with you. Um, and with that, uh, is there any other new business before I move on to media? Okay, media clarification. Uh, before I uh, ask, I just want to mention, uh, Dave stopped by and uh, made a suggestion that I really like. Uh, I would like to establish a couple of he stole a suggestion. Dave <laughs> 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 beautifully presented an idea that reflects the media's desire to Way to go, Dave. <laughs> All of the documents uh, regularly. Most of those are just public documents. For the copy, plus <laughs> the additional two sets of copies, I'd like to have a box for each of the papers. And when something goes into the council box that's not sensitive in nature, Let's just give it to them. Let's capitalize on making sure they have the correct details oh, and information. Good. They may have questions about that, but then they can help us communicate. But I would like to do that. Is there any uh, reason we shouldn't do that? Or okay. So we'll get media mailboxes, and you'll have the same stuff that the general counsel gets. And with that, uh, is there any clarification? I'm not straight on the dates, times, and places for all the work studies. And what precisely each one is for? May seventh, five p.m. May seventh, May seventh is five thirty for the city and priorities. April thirtieth is the police day. The fourteenth is true. We're going to start at yeah. Okay. Hold on. Fourteenth, we're going to start at five. Finance. Okay. Hold on just a second. April thirtieth is, is police. Is the police work study. Yes. And that is at what time? Five o'clock. Okay, then you have one on the 7th. That's at 5 30. And that is for? Budgetary and city priorities. Budget and city priorities. And then you said the 7th? That was that the 7th. That, that was the 7th. I'm sorry. Was there one after that? No, we have 12. The 12th, the finance, we're starting oh, the finance committee yeah, on the 12th to start a little early at 5 o'clock. Hopefully that will give us enough time to address okay. these Okay, right, now I got it. And those workshops are um, these work studies will be informal in nature they'll happen here uh, their discussion of the bodies but um, you know they are open to the public so so if you're interested come if you have a contribution to make I'm sure that you'll be heard 
Any other clarification? Other than to say thank you for do, for doing that, making yeah. things more transparent Appreciate and bringing it. things in line with. I mean, Dave has a much longer history in journalism. Than I <laughs> <laughs> but over the past 15 years, all of, I mean, I cover community wide, and there's no other place except here that there's not been a free flow of information where we haven't gotten a packet when you walk through the door. Okay. That changes today. So thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you for helping us uh, with the communication. Um, I would have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Back. Um, not all those in favor, just work.
it's part of their federal license. They have to do so much community stuff. Yeah. And but if you got them a tape, I think they, they might run it. And if they say, no, no, we don't want to run it, then you should uh, write your senator to the yeah. Federal Communication you know Commission. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of like a pet peeve. Well, you and me Well, but it, at least that's, that's, at least that's more access than yeah. zero. Well, that's why I try to put it And people would yeah, it's, it's yeah. a start. But it's, if they get that franchise, and that's a public monopoly that they enjoy, and they're supposed to give certain things to the community. You would think this network and the other places that would be required for their business. No, I have. There's just a rip-off. Oh, they are. And they should have. It's a total rip-off. But they don't have Hannibal stations or Quincy stations for us. We're in the middle. You know, we're right on that line. I, 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 I get it, but I, you have to pay five yeah. bucks. No, no. They don't give you. They will not give us. Like, I any local? Yeah, they'll give us local, but they will give us the same. Well, it's Mark. We can't get it. Yeah, but at least you get the car. Well, yeah. It's a trade. You don't get the car? No. You have to pay it. I know. I just want to get the car. Well, I mean, if you live in the in the city of Hannibal, but I live out the country. So you have to pay through the car. I guess Kelly? Are you going to the Davis's? Like, uh, oh, <laughs> 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 like, uh, <laughs> We should think about changing your name. Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, I like that. Oh, I'll try to say something. I in LA, there's all kinds of shows and programs and stuff like on there. Yeah, but too often in the big cities, you know, they end up with, you know, every nut. Yeah, well, those are good. Those, those are entertaining. But, but, those nuts are. But, but, you know what?